Hey guys, I'm at the docks near Seattle, Washington, and we're looking at another fat bike from Rad Power Bikes, but this is the Rad Mini, and this thing is awesome in large part because it folds. It becomes really compact, so if you have a yacht or a personal aircraft or maybe an RV or something, a lot of people are like, how do I have an electric bike but fit it into my life? And this one, I really think it brings you the fun of a fat bike, like the comfort, the go anywhere tires that can take you off road on trails or maybe through soft earth like sand. I actually took some of these to Mexico because there's a resort there, Cabo Adventures. And they were thinking like, we want to have some bikes like this to take people along the beach, you know? But which bikes can we get that people with a smaller kind of a shorter inseam can fit over and feel comfortable on so rad power bikes has the rad rover and it's like a full-size bike with 26 inch wheels this one has 20 inch by four inch fat okay so that's the four inches this way they still have the full psi range 5 to 30 psi so you drop it down to 5 and that's going to give you an even larger contact patch and and that traction and that float that you need for really soft terrain or including snow i grew up in colorado and you know if you got a bike like this and you were going to commute to work with it or something you lower that air pressure just a little bit and it gives you that kind of yeah I, it's hard to explain like if you've ever not ridden on snow but Traditional bike tires, they're like two and a half inches or something, and they just kind of sink into the snow where these kind of bulge and give you that float. So anyway, the tires are a, a big feature here, and it's just something I wanted to focus on. We got the Kenda Crusade Sport, um, and then the, the, the rims and the wheels. Maybe I'll go there next. The front wheel, it offers quick release. So whether you fold this thing in half and really break it down, or you just want to reduce the weight a little bit, you can just use that quick release skewer, pull it right off, take the battery off, it's 7.7 .7 pounds, and then you've reduced the overall weight of this bike significantly. It weighs about 63.7 pounds, so it's not the lightest weight thing in the world. That suspension fork, it's like a 60 millimeter travel here. It's not an air fork, it's a spring fork, and that's fine, you know, you're not gonna lose air pressure over time. It does have preload adjust, and it has lockout with compression adjust, so if you're a little bit heavier, or maybe you don't wanna have that kind of bouncy feeling, you listen to it click. So there's a bunch of different kind of settings in here and a larger people uh, might end up riding this you know i weigh about 135 pounds if you're someone who's up to 275 pounds that's the weight limit on this sometimes there's this kind of squishy feeling or whatever that lockout is going to help you reduce that and dive when you stop hard the bike can kind of dive forward so i just feel like even though it's not like the world's fanciest fork. They've, they've got all the special pieces and adjustments that, that I would look for. Um, while we're up here, notice that we've got this uh, Spinninga Ascendo headlight. It's got two LEDs and it's pretty bright. It's nice, it's aimable. It's mounted to the bridge on the fork. So when you ride, if you're bouncing up and down, the light might bounce a little bit. It'd be nice if that was up here, but then again, if you're folding and stuff, it might get bumped a little bit easier. And it's already kind of crowded up here because this does have brake lever motor inhibitors. R really good setup. And I'll get to that when we talk about the drivetrain later. But the suspension fork is a big deal for me, the tires. And then you can see that we have a fat bike specific motor. So see how the motor casing is a little bit wider. It gives you a nice bracing angle on those spokes and just that strength that you really want for the higher weight capacity. And especially if you put some gear on this included rack paint match. So I like that. It is bolt on so you could potentially remove that if you wanted to reduce the weight a little bit or the size but i like the rack in large part because it has an integrated light here this light is independent meaning it runs on two AAA batteries and you have to turn it on manually like that it'd be nice if it was running off the main battery just like the headlight and it was all integrated to the display but you know it's kind of a cost savings thing and spinning makes pretty good light so i'm a fan of this and it's better than nothing you just have to remember to turn it on if you click it again, you get flashing, and that's great because a lot of e-bikes, the, the lights don't flash. And then click it again, it goes off. So just, you know, you don't want to accidentally leave it on and come back and find that your battery's worn out. This rack is pretty neat. It has some bolts here, so you could actually put one of the baskets on there that Rad Power Bike sells. And it's got a window right here, this little rectangular space, so you can put the Yep Child seat on. So that's awesome. I, you know, I... I Racks, everyone has like a different use for them, but if you're someone who's a little bit more petite, maybe you're a mom and you've got kids, but you want the fat bike so you can kind of go off road a little bit or just the fun look of it, this bike is still very capable. I feel like Rad Power Bikes has consolidated and simplified their offering a lot for 2018, including like the battery. It's the same battery pack design for all of their bikes and it's upgraded in terms of capacity. So it used to be 48 volts, 11.6 amp hours, which is pretty, pretty good. Now it's 
48 volts, 14 amp hour, so significantly higher capacity. And they're using the Samsung 35E cells. Those are high energy density. They're just a little bit higher quality, like all the way across the bike. And replacement packs are like 499. So if you wanted to, you could use this rear rack and turn this into like a trekking bike and just go extra far and swap out the batteries on the way. The charger for this bike, it's a little bit more basic. It's like 1.1 pounds, which is nice, lightweight but it only puts out two amps. And when you're dealing with a battery pack that's higher capacity like this, that means it's gonna be five and a half, six hours to charge. Um, but again, you can just toss that in your bag or whatever, maybe charge it halfway. If you were using this to commute to work or something, you could leave the bike at the bike rack and then you just take the battery with you upstairs or whatever and plug it in while you're getting your work done. And it's just, it's just great. And then look at where the charging port is positioned. It's way up high. It's not near the crank arms or anything. It's not gonna get sheared off accidentally. And hopefully if you trip over it or something, um, it, it just pop out here versus getting all tangled up. So I, I definitely like that. I like what they've done. I also like that they've got a plastic chain guide. It'd be nice if this was aluminum alloy, which is what they have on some of the other bikes like the Rad City and the Rad, uh, Rad Rover. But this is still gonna help your pants like slough by and not get snagged or greasy on that chain. Also, if you're on bumpy terrain, like maybe you're going from the concrete to the docks or something, and you start bouncing around, that chain is not gonna bounce off and require that you get your hands all greasy and you know fiddle with that. So it's, it's pretty nice. 48 teeth on that chain ring, it's extra large. And then back here, we have kind of a smaller range cassette. So, you know, we've just got a basic Shimano tourney. It's kind of entry level, but we have 14 to 28 teeth. Whereas a lot of their other bikes, it's like 14 to 34. So, you know, why, why is the, the bigger sprocket smaller on this one? I think part of it is because the wheels are smaller. And so they're, they're balancing it out. When you have a, a larger wheel, you need a larger sprocket back here to get that mechanical advantage. For a folding bike like this with the smaller wheels, this works just fine. And this is part of the cost saving. So another, another thing that they've done here that's different from the other Rad Power Bikes is the, the motor cables coming out the side right here versus being tucked in on some of their Rad City bikes. It's a little bit, I think, you know, more protected there. But this derail your guard, if the bike tips or if you're folding it or whatever, it still offers decent protection and it's also gonna protect that derailleur. So that's something, you know, especially with a folding bike, this is the sensitive part of the bike. Um, there is a disconnect here. So you can, you know, if you have to do some maintenance, you get a flat tire or whatever kind of work you're doing, you can do it. It's just, you know, this is, this is where the complexity all happens. So the motor is rated at 750 watts. It's an internally geared Bafang motor. And in my experience, it's very zippy and capable, especially on a smaller wheel. Cause again, it gets a big mechanical advantage. It's not having to turn this huge wheel. It's a smaller wheel it gets, you know, it's, it's zippy. We'll see that later when we get out there and do a test ride. If you're in Canada, they have uh, just launched and they've got the same sort of free shipping thing that they do in the US now, but it's a 500 watt motor there to comply with local legislation and everything like that. They're also doing some stuff in Europe and they've got like a Rad Rhino that's gonna be released over there. These guys are growing a lot. Pretty exciting to see that they're, they're growing responsibly. Like there have been some other bike brands where it's like, we'll sell to you. And then the end consumer is like kind of stuck with maybe without support. Rad Power Bikes offers a year long comprehensive warranty and they have pretty good, you know, phone support and everything like that. So even though this is an online only type of electric bike, they're going the extra mile to help make it kind of worthwhile. And you do get the cost savings. So $14.99 on this, which is what I would consider to be very affordable in the world of electric bikes. They also have a partnership now with Velofix, which is a company in the US that'll like travel around and uh, assemble your bike and they'll deliver it to you. And then 30 days later, you can get them to tune it up so they can say, okay, you know, is it still shifting right? Or has there been some cable stretch? You know, how are the brakes doing? The brakes on this bike are pretty great considering that it has the smaller wheels. Again, you have the mechanical advantage. So these are 180 millimeter rotors. You get that extra width. They are mechanical versus hydraulic. So hydraulic disc brakes, you don't have to pull quite as hard on the levers and the levers tend to be a little bit smaller and they have adjustable reach. As far as mechanical brakes go, these are great because they got the integrated bell and they got the rubberized edges and stuff. And again, you have 180s in the front and in the rear and the cable is going to be relatively adjustable. If you've got a set of tools and stuff, you just use a hex wrench there and pull the cable. It's more of a DIY setup than hydraulic where you have to like bleed the brakes. And I usually just get help from a shop. So it depends really on, on what you want. But for a lot of people, if you're, you know, price sensitive and stuff, this is, is designed really well. And I think you can see that up here too. We've got extra plating and gussets on the folding point 
extra gusset right here. The frame's trying to be as stiff as it possibly can while still being low and relatively narrow. So I took this out with my, my girlfriend and she was riding this along on the beach and you know, not having a lot of problems here with her knees and her thighs hitting the frame. Uh, we tested another electric bike at that time and she did hit her knee and you got a big bruise. And so, you know, they, they want the joint to be strong, but you also need it to be narrow and um, I guess knee friendly, like body, body friendly. The locking mechanism here is pretty cool. It's got like one quick release point and then you swivel it out and then you still have to like spring up on this little pin for it to actually unlock. So it's, it's really, it's meant to be redundant. It's got like two locking points. Uh, same thing up here with the folding stem got this little button here and then you unfold it and that would fold down sideways and then it telescopes upwards. So if you're someone who's extra tall, this bike can still fit you and feel pretty comfortable. There's a lot of range on the seat post too. It's not just for petite riders. It's just, it's the bike I think of when I look for like fat bikes for shorter people, right? Like this, this kind of gets the job done. Even the smaller wheels, I talked about all the mechanical advantages, but they also lower the bike closer to the ground because the middle point is lower versus like a 26 inch wheel where the middle point's right there. So all things I think about. Uh, 12 gauge spokes, by the way, extra thick, gonna be extra sturdy. And even the folding pedals here, got these Welgo, they're metal versus plastic. They're a little bit wider. They've got these grip points. This is a nice folding pedal. And I don't see it a lot on, on other cheaper folding electric bikes. So this is another area where Rad Power Bikes has gone the distance. It's a purpose-built frame, obviously, to be electric. And the wires are a little more exposed. They aren't quite as like integrated as some. There's some really fancy electric bikes out there, like a Go Cycle, where everything's completely sealed off. But they cost like 3,000 bucks, and they don't have the fat tire. So, you know, it comes back to like, what are you really looking for? Do you even need a folding bike? Or maybe it's about being small and short. I hope I'm covering a lot of this for you so you can get a, get a good idea. And then over here, you can see this is sealed and it's metal threaded, one of the connector points. Uh, for the display so it's a little bit more water resistant and then we've got that that headlight down here if you opt for some of the accessories like you can see over here there's a, a basket there's this shelf piece with a nice gusset and then a basket it comes with an extender piece so you can remount the light a little bit further forward now these racks are great because they stay straight even when you turn so they aren't going to dump your load but the light's not going to shine <laughs> where you're pointing all the time um, and it's just a, it's a little bit um, I don't know, it's, it, I guess it's kind of a question mark in my mind. I, I can understand why if they had the light back here, it, it wouldn't work, it would be colliding, and if anything was hanging through the bag, it would get in the way. And then these fenders, that's another really great upgrade they offer. Plastic, so they're a little bit more durable if you bump them. They're not gonna rattle around as much as aluminum, and they're not gonna get rusty like steel. So this is another piece that kind of guaranteed to fit on their bikes, and even be kind of hot swappable, not the fenders, but the basket, if you get one of the other models. And the black one looks just so good, like, See how the, the black blends in perfectly and up here the fork is black and the basket's black. This is, this is definitely like kind of the cooler, more integrated look. But I actually really like the white ones because sometimes if I'm, I'm touring around a place I'm not used to and it gets to be dark, I want to be seen from the side. And that's as nice as this headlight is, it doesn't have the side cutouts. And then there's that rear light that's, you know, again, kind of the two-step thing. So just be careful, uh, you know, approach this thing thoughtfully depending on the terrain and the environment and everything like that. I'm actually here with uh, Mike Radenbaugh from Rad Power Bikes, one of the founding members. How's it going? Hey, Court. I was really excited to, to see how the battery goes on and off because this is one of the big like upgrades for 2018. Yeah, yeah, let me show you. Yeah, so once you've unlocked the battery on the side, um, you just lift forward and you don't actually have to remove the seat, which is a nice, nice feature. So it just pops oh, yeah. right out of there. That's great. Yeah, a lot of times there's like flip up seats or whatever, but then they get loose or you gotta undo that quick release every time. So being able to just slip that through. Yeah, look at that. They got two fuses here. So it's kind of a safety thing. And then maybe, I don't know, what, what does the fuse do? Like, what's So the... this allows you, the user, to replace the charge fuse and the main discharge fuse. It's just nice for serviceability. Um, okay. That way we don't have to be shipping batteries around. Uh, and the fuse the is designed, like, if there's some problem, it blows so the battery doesn't fail, and then you replace the fuse. Yeah, yeah, and if the fuse continues to blow, then there's something else, and then, uh, and then our tech support thing. team would, would, uh, would kick in then. Okay, well, good to know. And that's, you know, it's easy to see, easy to access. They got the stickers on it. There's the charging port we were talking about. Um, and then there's three like locking points on these battery packs. So when you slide it back on, oh, wait, wait, before you do that, this is a great shot. See how there are three points where this mount connects to the frame? 
a lot of electric bikes only have like two or they mount to where a bottle cage bosses or something would be. This one has three and it feels extra sturdy. Go ahead, man. Um, where's the controller unit? It's down in this box, isn't it? Correct, yeah. Okay, so down here you can see they've got another support arm so that you don't bang up that plastic chain guard too much. They've got the controller unit that's stored in that box below. On their other bikes, they have like a little plastic box that's tacked to the frame somewhere. And most of their other bikes have bottle cage bosses, but they weren't able to fit them on this one. So it comes back to maybe, you know, adding one aftermarket or doing like a little cup holder on the, the handlebars and stuff there. So pretty nice. The other cool feature about the battery packs now is you know, you, you put it on the bike and you lock it. And that first step, the battery is locked physically, but it's not turned on yet. So people, you know, if you parked at a bike rack, they couldn't turn it on. They couldn't mess around with this, which is really nice because it's got this throttle and you don't want people tampering with it. And then on the next click, then it turns the whole bike on, it activates it. And then, you know, their older bikes, you had to push a button on the battery. You had to think about it, it was a two-step process. The new one, it's just one. You just hold down, in fact, let's do it. We hold down the mode button, the display comes right to life. I love that. And the new display, it's got this adjustable angle. It kind of swivels a little bit. It's not removable, so it could take some more weather wear or scratches or whatever. And especially when folding, just be careful with it because it looks, it's so beautiful. At the bottom, there is a full-size USB type a, I think this is five volt, one amp. So coming back to maybe you have a cup holder on one side and then you've got their phone mount. They have this like grabber thing on the other and you could use GPS if you're using this in a new location. You don't really know where you're going. You just look down, you got your phone and the phone's not gonna run out of batteries because you're tapping into that extra large battery capacity there. So we've got battery indicator. It's got five bars. We've got odometer and if you hold I think mode, actually you just click mode. It goes to trip meter, there we go, and then speed in the middle. Pedal assist, it seems to turn on at level one, which is nice and smooth. That means the throttle is hot. If you arrow down to zero, the throttle is still hot. So it's like a throttle only operation. For those people who are a little worried about the throttle, you can turn it completely off. So see, I just did that, and now I don't need to worry about that if I bump the bike or move it. I, I really like that, that they've included this because everything else is there. You've got throttle override at full power. You've got throttle at zero. And now we've got pedal assist only. And I was asking them like, you know, you keep using this cheap shifter here. It's this big SIS index thing. What's the deal? And they said, well, actually, you know, we like that shifter because you can use it with gloves. And think about this, you might be in the snow or something. And you can also use it without getting in the way of that on off button. So a lot of times you have little triggers down here. This one, it's really big and it's way up high. Um, I think it's, it works fine. And it, it kind of made me rethink like, oh, that's why. So the five levels of assist over here, the higher you go, the more zippy it's gonna be, but you're also gonna burn through the battery a bit faster. And then watt meter, and that gives you some idea of like how much energy that the motor is putting out. And then on the left with speed, you can hold the up arrow and go to average speed and max speed readouts. It's pretty cool. The other thing you can do is hold up and mode, and that turns on backlighting on the display and it activates that headlight right there. And I, there's like a strobing effect happening because my camera, the timing are syncing up or something. And then if you hold down the down button, let's try this. Oh yeah, that's right, walk mode. So it appears that you do have to be in one of the levels of assist for a walk mode to work, but that's nice for people who might be on a dock. Like we're, we're probably not supposed to ride the bikes here, right? Or maybe you're going through a park or maybe you get a flat tire or you've got a cargo or something. Walk mode's gonna help you to move this 63.7 pound bike a little bit more easily. It's nice to have that. If you hold up and down, it, it enters the other menus and you can change like miles per hour to kilometers and stuff. There's a lot of extra settings. And I just wanna like look at this again. Look at that nice shorter stem. We've got a low rise bar. We've got the ergonomic grips. They, they're not locking, you know, even the saddle. It's like, they're, they're good enough. And, and I think they, they give you that comfort and they give you a more upright body position, a lot of adjustability for what is still one of the more affordable electric bikes out there. I think that's about it. We've gone through most of the specs. Might be time to hop on and actually ride this thing. Okay guys, we're just cruising around a parking lot. I'm sorry, I wish we had uh, a little bit more off-road, but I'm gonna try to go off some curves and stuff to show this thing off. I'm on the outfitted Rad Mini, and I wanted to do that so you could hear, listen for the fenders and the rack and everything like that, but I'm also gonna focus you on the motor back here so you can see how quickly it starts and stops. Rad Power Bikes has upgraded their cadence sensor to 12 magnets, so it's a higher resolution, and both brake levers have the motor inhibitor, so every time you pull them, the motor cuts out instantly and it gives you that extra safe, like, controlled feel. 
I'm just gonna take it up to level three so it's not too fast, but you can still hear the motor zip a little bit. These geared motors are known for being lightweight, they freewheel efficiently, and they're a little bit zippier than like the Rad City or the Rad Wagon, which use a gearless. Those motors are a little bit heavier, 15 pounds versus 13 pounds on this one. So it's kind of a trade-off, like what, what do you want? You know, since this one's a bit more off-road oriented, they went with the zippier feel. So here we go. Feeling pretty stable, even with the basket. Oh boy, <laughs> the smaller wheels tend to be a little bit twitchier. Um, but you know, with that mechanical advantage, they really have some get up and go. Take it to level five now. Kind of a hot rod. Oh boy, got those disc brakes going on. Let's go over some bumps. Suspension test. Nice. <laughs> Almost to 20 right there. Just a really quick zipped up to speed. I'm in pedal assist level uh, five now. And then Mike's back there on the, the white one. And he forgot to turn his light on. There we go. Looking good. Can I do a handoff? Yeah. Nice. There we go. bit of off-road action. Okay guys, from here you can see the chain ring up here. Again, 48 teeth, so it's a little bit bigger than their other ones. We got the slap guard, it's gonna keep the chain in good shape. And then we've got the cassette back here. So I'll be shifting through some of the gears and I'm using that higher resolution 12 magnet cadence sensor. I'm gonna pedal, I'm gonna stop, listen for the motor. And again, with the geared motors on the Rad Rover and the Rad Mini, it's a little bit more noise because there's gears inside, but you do get that freewheeling. So it's pretty efficient when you coast. <laughs> Okay guys, now you're on the, actually on the rack in the back and I was hoping you could see the suspension. And of course we're in Seattle and there's some puddles. So I'm gonna go through some puddles and just see how this thing performs. <laughs>
much soaking. So I'm trying to make it up for you since we aren't on the mountain biking trail, but I'm I'm pretty dry. I got my pants got a little a little splashed, but it's working pretty well. <laughs> Okay guys, and then again, since this is a more sensitive area of the bike, I just wanted to do some shifting and go through. It's a little wet because we were riding through some puddles, but um, should give you an idea. actually feels pretty good going from you know zero up to 20 miles per hour it really covers that spread even though it's only seven gears I also want to compliment the kickstand that they've chosen it's well out of the way it's not going to collide with that crank arm if you back the bike up so many times bikes don't have a kickstand or it's right there in the middle and it just doesn't it doesn't do a great job and in this case especially if you have bags or cargo on the back of the bike it's going to support it it's adjustable length and it's got a bigger footprint at the bottom so it doesn't sink into soft terrain okay so we've done the little ride test i've done the walk around with all the specs and stuff but i'm sure what you really want to see is it folding right so mike's going to fold this and in the background look at this Mike, it's a boat with a helicopter. Wow. Not no, an electric helicopter. <laughs> not electric <laughs> yet, right? Okay, so he's unlocking that stem. He's folding it down. He's unlocking the center clasp. He just did the little center locking point thing. Sets it down. We've got that protector piece, and then he just folded the pedal. Folded the second pedal. Oh yeah, and then the seat. So you can take the seat completely off if you want to make it like extra kind of compact one thing i usually do too with folding bikes is i'll go on amazon and they have these like bungees adjustable bungee cords plastic ones that won't scratch your frame up and everything and then you can keep it together maybe put a towel here so that it doesn't you know get bent and stuff also turn the bike off before you fold it we're we got a little excited i think but you know definitely disable the throttle turn the bike off so you don't accidentally hit that that throttle and have it zip off on you um, and remember that backlight i think that's I think that's it. They've gone a little bit long here, but there's a lot to talk about with these folding bikes. It's always fun to be with a team member and to get to show like the naked bike versus a fully outfitted bike. Rad Power Bikes also offers a suspension seat post that would work here, 27.2 millimeters. So you can give yourself kind of a full suspension feel between the front and the rear, the tire pressure and everything. They've got different baskets. They've got some cool panniers that are waterproof. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I think that's about it. You know, thanks again, Mike. I've had a lot of fun here getting to check it out with you. For the full ride up on this, I'll see you guys back at electricbikereview.com with all the specs, the measurements and everything like that. Have fun out there, uh, ride safe. We'll see you next time.